Hello, it's Claire from Angelic Scallywags Homeschool. Welcome to my short series on how to plan a homeschool history unit study. Today, I'm going to talk about quiet time in our homeschool. Quiet time is an extended time away from everybody else, where we go to our bedrooms and we have some time on our own. In our homeschool, we have quiet time just after lunch, when bellies are full and everyone's sleepy. The babies go down for a nap and anybody that doesn't need a nap stays upstairs in their bedroom and they have a quiet time basket full of toys. As the children get older, there are less toys in their basket and more books. And these books are themed to the unit study that we're studying at the time. And they're usually historical novels. There are so many advantages to quiet time, which I've written about in my blog post, which you can find in the link below. Homeschooling a large family is really hard work and it's very intense because you're with each other 24 hours a day. Quiet time gives you an hour away from each other and an hour to decompress from the morning school and rejuvenate for the afternoon school ahead. Quiet time also teaches the child to enjoy their own company and to enjoy solitude and it introduces them to the concept of quiet time which is few and far between in this electronic world that we live in. I usually teach quiet time as an extension of nap time, which is by far the simplest way of doing it. As the nap time becomes shorter, the quiet time becomes correspondingly longer. As my children didn't really know any different, it was just very, very easy and not really much of a struggle to get them to spend an hour a day on their own. Occasionally we would change it up and the children would be allowed outside and they'd lie on the trampoline reading their books for an hour. Most babies won't experience quiet time because they'll be fast asleep. However, we did have one child who, no matter what I did, wouldn't settle down for a nap. And so she was given a basket of her own toys that were very baby themed, I guess from about six to seven months old. For Abigail, the child that didn't sleep, we would put on an audio book which lasted for an hour, which was a really good way of signalling to her when the quiet time had ended. For Abigail, we bought a long lasting mobile that went on and sang and went round and round with animals, which she loved just to lie down and watch. She also had cuddly toys. When the children were transitioning from a nap to a quiet time, I might have put on an audiobook again to tell them the time that they were allowed to come down because the audiobooks were an hour long. And also it lulled them off to sleep often, which was helpful. Quiet time toys for this age group are things like Etch-a-Sketch, Big Lego, picture books and any kind of safe building materials. I remember that they really enjoyed just building things. As the children became older and they were reading fluently, we gave them historical novels which were linked in with the historical unit study that they were learning at that time. Teaching a child to have quiet time when they've never been exposed to it before is, I think, probably much harder than transitioning straight from nap time to quiet time. In this case, I would work closely with the child. I'd make sure my expectations were very clear and I'd allow them to choose the quiet time basket of goodies to play with. I'd also start off with a short amount of time, for example, maybe 10 minutes and then increasing it by 10 minute increments until you're at the time that you want them to stay in their room for. If you have a child who really isn't that impressed by quiet time, we had a child who was not very impressed by quiet time at all, um, but we worked alongside her and we did persevere because we really felt that quiet time offered so many benefits, not just to a weary mother, but also to the children themselves. In general, we found that if a child really enjoys reading, then quiet time is not a hardship at all. But for a child who maybe doesn't enjoy reading, it might be beneficial to find something else for them to do for half of the amount of time. So for Lily, who wasn't such a great reader as the others, we allowed her to make her jewellery, which she always loved doing. She's very artistic. And from that moment on, we had no problems with her asking to come down. Other ideas would be to give the child an alarm clock and set it for the amount of time that you want them to stay up there for and they're allowed to come down afterwards. 
working in partnership with them so that they look forward to the quiet time because of the toys that you've given them and also offering them a treat afterwards. As I mentioned earlier, I've written a post which outlines in more detail how quiet time looks for us as a family. So do press on the link below. Over the next few weeks, I will be sharing more about how we carry out our history unit studies. Please do subscribe so you don't miss any. And if you have any questions or any aspects you'd like me to cover in future videos, please do leave a comment below. Thank you. Bye bye.